kind of worry that the fortunate outcome from today's video is going to reinforce bad habits, but bear with me. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I am your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and it's a doozy. LuckyGunner.com is my go-to resource for in-stock, fast shipping ammunition. Whether you're looking for rifle ammo, handgun ammo, rimfire ammo, or shotgun ammo, go to LuckyGunner.com for the best place on the internet to find it all in stock and ready to ship. They have stood by us all in this ammo pandemic, given us great education via their YouTube channel and their ballistic testing as well. Go and check them out and find great ammo ready to ship at good prices. In this neighborhood that's had an increase in home invasions and in property crimes in the area, you see this guy kind of wandering around in the snow and late at night. You can see that on their surveillance cameras. And he's gonna jump the fence. And of course, their surveillance set is going to kind of light them up that something's going, especially when he you know, sets off the motion detecting light. Then he kind of points in front of the door and then when he doesn't see anything, he doesn't knock or anything like that, he is gonna go over to the detached garage. The lady of the house is actually then going to start hollering at him and actually point a gun out and take a warning shot there and shoot a couple times in the air to warn this guy to leave. And he's not going to leave, though. You can see she tells her son to go get another gun. Her son's standing in the doorway with her. Go read the news story. Tells him to leave, but he's going to instead come towards the house. There's another warning shot. And finally, when that's not there, he keeps coming, starts reaching for his waistband a little bit there. And that final one was not a warning shot, and that one ended up proving fatal to this man. To go read the news stories that I've put in the description, there has been a bit of consternation about this one. But the sheriff said, hey, the warning shots weren't a great idea, but they were legal, and this is a case of self-defense, and so let's talk about it in the lessons. We actually have an extended discussion on the legality of warning shots in almost every jurisdiction. Over on Active Self Protection Extra, I have put a link in the description. Please go watch that video as well, and let's talk about the other lessons here. So of course, uh, this is not okay. You know, you, you jump over someone's fence, you break into their detached garage, none of that stuff is morally acceptable, okay? So in some sense, this guy put the quarter in the jukebox so he gets to dance to the song. And of course, he's radically stupid, you know, ignoring somebody shooting a gun in the air next to him and telling him to leave, okay? So, so he's at big fault on this one. From the perspective, though, of a homeowner, I want to talk about this. The right thing to do here is get on the phone with 911. That's the prudent thing to do here, rather than to open your back door, which increases your risk. Because when you go out there and shoot a warning shot, now again, there's nothing in between you and that guy. Number two, in most jurisdictions, this is actually a crime and can be prosecuted as a crime up to a felony, depending uh, on your jurisdiction. Warning shots are a terrible idea. They decrease your capacity of your firearm. They let the bad guy know where you are. And again, you can be prosecuted for felonies in some place for this, so I really don't recommend them. Also, again, it puts you at significant risk. Better to stay inside the home, call 911, maybe holler out through the door, the cops are on the way, get out of my house or whatever, rather than do something like this. Now, now she tells her son, go get the other firearm, right? And go get the rifle, whatever. Uh, and, and But I'm not sure which gun took the actual shot here because I do think this next one is also a warning shot. And again, now you've got a guy that you fired multiple warning shots who is advancing on you, but you are still firing warning shots at him, decreasing your capacity. Clearly that's not working. Now, another reason I don't like warning shots is that they don't often work. This one, on the other hand, does not look like a warning shot to me. It looks like it's pointed right at our perp who is point, you know, looking like he's grabbing towards his waistband or something like that. And I will say as well, would a reasonable person believe potentially that they are at significant risk when they have fired multiple warning shots and given multiple warnings on their property to somebody who is a trespasser? Yeah, probably okay. Can a judge, you know, can a prosecutor expect beyond a reasonable doubt that 12 people are going to say otherwise? Probably not. So our homeowner is going to get the benefit of the doubt here. And, and, and I think rightly so. That said, though, of course, we use a firearm as a tool of last resort only to protect life. And I do like here that they did wait until the right time that he is advancing on them after all those warnings in order to actually use deadly force here rather than simply to threaten deadly force. I think that was the right thing. The last thing I do want to consider here, though, is this. They have to live with this every day of their life. They have to live with being in the news every day of their life. 
They have to live with the fact that this guy's family is now all kinds of mad at them and might want to retaliate for what the family feels like was an unjustified use of deadly force, even though I believe it was absolutely a justified use of deadly force. So therefore, there's a difference between can I shoot someone, should I shoot someone, and must I shoot someone? So please, I think the better answer here is to stay inside the house, call the cops, let the cops hook the guy up for trespassing and breaking into your, you know, your detached garage and those things, because you won't have to live with all of those things and the emotional and spiritual connotations of it as well. That said, I think it was justified conduct. I think they're going to be okay. It met the can I standard. It's a little dicey. I would recommend that you meet the must I standard instead as you seek to cover your ass.